Luminar Neo Update version 1.1 has seen the release of the Portrait Background Removal tool. I'm very excited. Let's take a look at how we can use it and how we can make the most of it. For the most part, the results are excellent, but sometimes the AI just needs a little helping hand and thankfully Skylum have unlocked the box and given us a tool where we can actually help the AI along its way to get a better result. So in this video, not only am I gonna show you a couple of different approaches we can use for working with the portrait and the background and bringing those two together, but also I'm gonna be sharing with you a couple of secret hacks with you that I've not seen shared anywhere else, but they're really useful for getting the most out of the tool. So we're gonna start easy and build from there. Let's get into it. So let's see how we actually use this tool. It's super easy. All we need to do is come over to the layer properties, drop that down, and we have the option to jump into masking. And that's where we're gonna find portrait background. So we just click that. Luminar does a very quick calculation to work out where our subject is. And then all we need to do is click remove. There's a little bit of calculation and then just like that, we have that background taken away. From here to drop a background in, all we need to do is come over to the layers section on the left hand side, click the plus icon and from here we can just select one of our own images. So for example, I'm gonna use the sky from my previous video I just put up. Initially Luminar is gonna map the new layer to fit inside whatever the existing dimensions are, but we want to actually fill that so that it covers the whole frame. We can see if I crank the opacity all the way to 100% that this is the layer that's sitting on the top. And you can see that on the left hand side that we have our subject underneath this. So all we need to do is just reorder these by pulling this down and releasing. And that's all there is to it. Here's our before, here's our after. We now have a new background, super easy. For the most part, I've found the AI that controls the portrait masking exceptional. It's really good. However, it's not always perfect. And so I'm gonna find a particularly difficult image to throw at it. And then we can look at how we can solve the areas that it hasn't quite figured out. Let's take a look at that. Okay, surely this image just spells disaster for the AI. We've got somebody who's upside down, their hair falling down onto textured wood here. This is surely gonna be pretty difficult for the AI to figure out, but let's see what it does. Let's jump into the masking section. Again, portrait AI, very quick to calculate that. Now we just click remove. It's running another calculation to look for those edges, look where the subject is, and bang, there you go. She's cut out. It's not perfect as I predicted, but it's not bad. So what can we do about that well we have access to a refinements brush and if we drop that down we can see exactly what's going on luminar's ai has identified three separate zones in the photograph the orange zone is the object i.e the person in our photo we then have a transition zone which is luminar's way of looking for the edge of our subject and then that goes over into the blue area which is the background if, as in this case here, Luminar hasn't quite got it right, we can come in and actually give it a helping hand. And I really like that ability to now come in and talk specifically into these masks. So by painting this with blue, I've basically said to Luminar, this is all part of the background. And before I tell Luminar that this is background here, first of all, I need to say, hey, you know what? You didn't quite get it right around her wrist here and just clean that up. So I'm gonna come in and just shrink my brush down using the left bracket key and just paint over the edge of her wrist and her hand. And now straight away, Luminar's starting to understand what we're asking of it. And now I can come back in, grab my background brush and just paint over this area here, for example, and release that and it's gonna clean that up. I could do the same through here, release that, and you can see that that starts to clean that area up as well. It's done a pretty good job identifying the gap between her legs. <laughs> that didn't come out quite how it's supposed to. Uh, okay, focus, Anthony. Let's just do one more clean up around her shoulders here just to show you how easy this can be. So you don't need to be super precise with your brush. All we're gonna do is do a nice large transition brush, paint over this area, and with any luck, Luminar's AI is gonna figure out that is uh, something that needs to be removed. Let's do the same over this side. And there you go, it finds the edge of our subject really nicely. And so unlike the last example where I brought in a new layer and dropped it underneath this subject, let's look at a different approach here. What we can do is actually export our subject and then bring her into a brand new image if that's how we want to work. It's a different workflow, but equally valid. So to make sure we're not creating a file size bigger than what we need, we're gonna crop down around our subject. I'm gonna change the ratio to three so that I can actually drag in from the sides like this and like this. Click to close the tool and now we have her cropped. Now I can right click and come to export. 
Now the most important thing when you've cut a subject out and we're dealing with transparency is we need to make sure we're selecting a format that actually supports transparency. JPEG does not, but you see when I select PNG that all of a sudden we have this option to save transparency, which is exactly what we want. Click export. Okay, so let's say you're working on a new photo and you want to bring in our upside down girl for a new layer. All we need to do is click on the new layer, click here, and then we can double click to bring her in and now she's available to us as her own asset. And just by clicking on her, she's dropped in with the standard 50% opacity, bring that up to 100% and now you can do whatever you like with <laughs> with this lady. We could, uh, we could squish her down. Oh God, no, you don't want to do that. Well, I hope you like that very believable composite there. So that's an alternative workflow approach you can take where you save out the portrait as its own PNG and then bring that in over the top of an existing background rather than the way I showed you initially, which is where you bring in the background once the portrait has had that background removed. Obviously choose the workflow that's right for you. However, I will be showing you a good little hack that you can use when you actually export that portrait as its own PNG. But for now, let's press on and see what else we can do. Tell you what, should we do our first hack? Let's do that. As part of my commercial photography, I do a lot of business headshots, and oftentimes they'll ask for the portraits to be done on a pure white background. And as you may know, sometimes it's just not possible to shoot against a pure white background, and it's not the easiest thing to actually evenly light and overexpose the background, and sometimes you have to work with things here. This is actually a stock photo, this is not one of mine, but I'll show you how using that portrait background removal tool, how we can quickly place her over a white background. So all we need to do is come to the masking, portrait background, click remove, Luminar does its thing and then she's extracted against a transparent background. So now all we need to do is just bring in a white background, right? No, we can, we can hack our way through this and do it even easier. Let's see what we do. All we need to do is come to right click, come to export, and rather than doing a PNG, we're gonna do a JPEG, rename the file appropriately, click export. I'm not too worried about the settings. So if we jump back to the catalog, this is the thumbnail that Luminar is creating based on that photo, and it's turning any transparent pixels gray just for the thumbnail's purposes. So just remember that. But what we wanna do is add the photo that we just created. So double click that. There you go, one click on portrait background removal, save it out and we've got a white background, easy. So far we've seen the portrait background removal tool demonstrated on a single subject, but what if we've got multiple people, what if we've got multiple people, a group shot for example, can it handle it? Absolutely it can, let's take a look. Okay, this might not be the best group photo ever taken, but it certainly fills my bucket. There's my daughter, my son, and my wife. This was just taken in my back garden, but let's suppose I want to place this group somewhere else. We're gonna to come to the masking section again, portrait background, and then click remove. For just one click, we've got pretty close and we still have access to the refinement brush to just polish things up if we want to. I'm not gonna go into that on this example, but I will bring your attention to something. If I zoom into 200% and we look around the hairline here, while the AI has done a really good job of identifying where the hairs are, we're just getting a few dirty pixels around the edges. And that's actually a really common problem. And so, enter portrait hack number two. Now I love this one. I developed this years ago inside of Photoshop and thankfully it translates over over to Luminar Neo very nicely. So let's look at what we can do to actually get around that issue of that fringing on the hair. This is good. Well, you might disagree, but I think it's good. We're gonna close that down and we're gonna export this. If you right click and you don't have the option to export, I'm not sure what's going on there, but if you jump back to the catalog, come back into it, you should then have that ability to export it. I'm gonna again choose PNG so that we're saving that transparency data and just hit export. Okay, let's jump back into the edit section, zoom out a little bit, and we're gonna import something that can go into our background. Now, although this is not gonna be a believable look, I'm just gonna go with this because it's gonna serve a purpose. I'm gonna crank the opacity up, and I'm thinking that the sun would be better coming over from the right-hand side, so I'm just gonna flip that over, and I'm gonna rearrange my layers by dragging that down, and now we can see that the family's on top, but unfortunately, all of that fringing that we were talking about, that really shows up. So what are we gonna do? Well, first of all, I'm just gonna hide this layer just by dropping the opacity down to zero. And now I'm gonna come in and add a new layer, come to the add images, I'm gonna bring in the PNG with transparency that we've already created. And now all we need to do is double click it, come over here, crank the opacity up, and there they are. And that should look identical to what we had before. However, 
Now we're going to come in and we're actually going to change the blending mode from normal and we're going to choose screen. Reason we're going to choose screen, if you look around the edge of the hair where the sun was catching those hairs, we're still going to get the light bright hairs, but we're not going to get those dark pixels. But this isn't quite right. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to take the version where we're in the normal blend mode. So if I bring the opacity back up to 100, we can see that and we've got all that nasty fringing back. But what we're going to do is actually bring that up above. So we've got that original sat on top with all that dirty fringing. And now if I were to hide this layer, we have that screen version underneath. And so all we need to do is paint a mask around the edge and we're going to have the best of both worlds. So let's show that layer. We're going to come to the masking and this time we want to jump into the brush tool and be on the erase mode. Make sure we've got a nice soft brush and watch this. I'm just going to paint very roughly around the edge here and uh, all of a sudden that hair is disappearing. You're going to see it more pronounced uh, where it's actually darker in the background. So let's just paint in this little section here. Boom, sorted that out. We've still got the hairs, but this time we don't have all that those dirty pixels that were accompanying it before. All right, I'm going to just zoom in here and you can see that we've got the best of both worlds. We have the true representation of my daughter on her face here, but now we have the hair reintroduced without all of those dirty pixels. So that's a really good way of getting rid of that darker fringing and color fringing that you might get on bright, say blonde or backlit hair. But what if you're dealing with dark hair? What do you do then? Well, don't panic. I've got you covered there as well. It's a slight variation on this approach. Let's take a look. Oh, before we get into the next edit, just want to say Skyrim have come to the party with a discount code, which you can use in the link below. And that's going to save you guys some money on what is an excellent piece of software, but it's also very affordable, even more affordable now. And it's also feature complete, as in it's got all of the amazing tools that Skyrim initially promised us that we've been waiting for patiently. They're finally now all here in Neo. And so if you are looking for a photo editor at the price point it's at, with all the features it includes, I would thoroughly recommend it. Anyway, let me show you that next tip. Okay, we're going to work on this one. And if I zoom into her hair here, you're going to be able to see that it's going to be very difficult for Luminar's AI to actually isolate the hairs and us to extract this and put it on a new background. Or is it? I've actually already composited this. This is with a brand new background using that technique. And so let's deconstruct this by resetting it and I'll show you what I've done. I'm going to jump back to the catalog so that I can come over to the adjustments and revert to original. And there you go, she's actually against the blue background of some water. And so what did I do to create that? Well, the same as before, the first step is coming over to layer properties, masking and portrait background. We click the remove tool. Luminar is going to do some number crunching, work out where our subject is, where our background is. Take a little while for this one. And there we go. You can see that it's created transparency through her hair here and over on the left hand side. And if we click on the refinement brush, we can see why. So the object, it hasn't fully selected that. However, it did recognize that the bandana was part of our subject. So all we need to do is just come in and just add to the object, making sure that we're going closer to the edge of her hair. Paint that in around there and then release. And then again, Luminar's just gonna do a bit of extra number crunching. Now we've given it that helping hand, that is much better. I'm going to close that down and now we need to put our background behind our subject. So we're going to click the plus icon so that we can add a new layer. And I'm just going to choose uh, this image here of the field with some sunflowers. And what we have the option to do is either fit the image, which is what it's selected to at the moment, which means it's going to fit to the width of the photo, but we want it to fill the entire frame. You also have an option to stretch. If we select stretch, you'll see that the ratio has changed. Therefore, the geometry of the image, it doesn't quite work. So obviously we want to fill and that's going to keep our proportions exact. And now we just want to push the opacity all the way to 100. And now we just need to reorder them with our subject, our model on the top. And now we can see the problem. We can see that fringing once again. So let's zoom in here. I'm just using the scroll wheel on my mouse. That's re-rendered and you can see the hair selection is pretty accurate. It's just that fringing that's letting us down. And so we're going to do something similar to what we did last time, but this time I'm going to do it all in one document. We're not going to save it out as a PNG. And to achieve the result we want, I'm just going to add a new instance of that photo. I've already loaded it into my library, so we just need to click on that. 
and then that's brought in with 50% opacity, crank that all the way to 100, and we can see that we're basically back to where we started. I'm just gonna zoom out here, we come to masking, and we just wanna do the same thing, just select the portrait background tool, remove the background, and we're probably not getting a true representation of that layer because the other one underneath is still visible, so I'm gonna right click and hide that layer. And now you can see we've got the same issue we had last time. So we want to make sure we've selected that layer and we can just fix that up. It would be brilliant if Luminar actually allows us just to copy the layer from one to the next, which I'm sure they will do in future releases. However, for now, we just need to make sure that we say, hey, you want to include all of this as our subject, close that down and we're good to go. So currently, if I was to show this layer again, we currently have two identical layers, which is basically our subject cut out with a very evident blue fringe that we need to fix up. And so what I'm gonna do this time is I'm gonna initially hide the top layer. And so we're gonna talk into this layer only. And all I need to do is come into the layer blending mode and just choose multiply. And just like that, you can see we've still got the hair, but that has got rid of all of that blue fringing. But obviously a consequence of changing it to multiply is we now no longer see the subject. And that's where we come into reshow this top layer. And all we need to do is just remove the area where we had that blue fringing. And so we're gonna jump into masking, brush, and I'm gonna choose the arrays version of the brush, increase the size of that brush, just so I can get this done relatively quickly. And I'm just gonna go around the edge of a hairline there, just like that. And look at that, we've cleaned that up nicely. You can see we've fixed all of that blue fringing up. So yeah, we can come around the edge of that, around the edge of the bandana. We can see some of that blue fringing on this side here. So again, we can just paint around the edge, pretty roughly, and that's all taken care of. So there you go, there's a couple of hacks you can use with the portrait background removal tool inside of Luminar Neo. Really hope those have been helpful to you. I try and pack a lot into my videos, so they often go for quite a while, but I do have more tips and tricks to do with this tool. So if you wanna learn more about it, just write tips and tricks in the comments below and I'll put another video together. But for now, thanks so much for watching guys. Just above my head, there is another video that YouTube is suggesting you might like. So go and check that out and I'll see you over there. Thank you so much.